Hey guys, so today's video is about making a wreath out of hydrangea blooms from my garden, specifically dried hydrangea blooms. I love the magnolia wreath that is in my front door right now, but I'm ready for a garden refresh, I'm ready for a porch refresh for the spring, and it's really the first time that I have enough hydrangea blooms in my garden to make it part of a wreath or any kind of arrangement, so I'm super excited. Now this hydrangea is called Endless Summer Hydrangea, and this is the first year that it's put on significant blooms because this is going into its third season now, so it's a few years in. Fair warning now, um, don't be like me, be better than me. So right around this time, at least in New Jersey, which is zone 7A in my area, you're gonna start seeing that the buds are swelling on the branches. So if you bump into those buds like I did, you will see that I bumped the bud off and I basically like ruined that bud on that particular branch. I mean, there's gonna be more buds, but I'm just saying, just try to be careful so you're not mad at yourself afterwards. Now I know that this isn't a huge amount of blooms, but it's enough for what I need in particular, and I was very excited to have at least enough to do this wreath this year. So the next step for me was I grabbed a box that I got at Sam's, and I saved it for this project, and I'm about to spray paint it with a few different colors that I thought would give it a little bit of a bright pop, considering that this is a spring wreath. Now it's still going to take on kind of a darker hue because I want that to pop through and I want it to be evident that it is real blooms underneath, but um, giving it that little bit of spray paint in my opinion in the spring anyway is going to give it that extra pop of color because my particular porch is a covered porch on the north side of the house. So there's not that much sun that reaches um, that particular area and it's covered so I need it to be at least a little bit bright. But I want it to fit in with the other kind of muted colors um, in my front porch so that it didn't kind of overwhelm the space and look out of place. I'm going to leave them outside to dry off while I start the next stage of making this wreath. For this project, I bought a metal wreath frame and a flat foam pad and a moss pad, I don't know how else to describe it, um, all at Michael's, as well as a bee that has a little light inside that you could light up. And I spent this maybe $25 at Michael's. Now some of the things I had already on hand is the hot glue gun and the Gorilla Glue Sticks. And then I also had the um, ribbon, I have a bag of ribbon that I bought at the thrift store and the yellow I thought would look nice with the bee that I have. I had a, um, what is that called, paddle wire and then a wire cutter, a floral cutter. I forget what it's called, but you can get all those at a craft store. Uh, I already had these floral picks with what I think is supposed to be Crespedia um, in my supply and I'll show you everything I have um, later on in this video as far as floral picks. And the reason that I picked this foam pad is because there were other options at the craft store, but this particular option meant that my wreath could stay a little bit more lightweight. I liked the wooden little slabs that they sold there, but they would have made the wreath a lot heavier. And this wreath is easier to secure to the wire frame anyway, because I can poke holes through it, which I'll show you in a minute. I also used this yellow ribbon to cover up the edges of the foam pad because that was going to be the only thing that might show when my plan came to fruition and I put it all together. I thought that that might be the only area that I wasn't going to be able to cover once everything was done, so I did it in the beginning. Now I had many colors that I could have picked for this project, but again, I picked the yellow ribbon because I wanted to draw in from some of the yellow that was going to be in the light that's in the bee and the yellow that's in the Craspedia picks that I had. Now the next step is I wanted to attach this little moss pad to the foam portion of the wreath. Now this is the one area that I will say, I had a great gun, that gun is really precise for detail work, but I probably should have used a glue gun that dispenses enough glue and quickly 
um, instead of small strands because that's more of a precision gun but I couldn't find my other one. As you can see I am gluing all around the edges to make sure that it's secure and does not lift up. Now the next stage is I used a straw which is hollow to poke a hole in the foam pad and that makes it really easy for me to secure the foam pad on all ends to the metal frame and I have had wreaths before where you can't really steady it and every time you open and close the door the wreath wants to like fling and flop every which way and certain portions of the wreath separate from the frame I didn't want that I wanted it to be one solid piece that doesn't flop around when you open and close the door so that's why I didn't just do one area where I secured the foam to the metal piece I wanted all the way around and this is where the paddle wire comes in. I'm putting the paddle wire through the hole in the foam and pulling it through to the other side and securing it to the metal on the back. Being careful to tuck in the edges, the little pointy edges of the paddle wire to make sure that it doesn't hit the door every time I open and close the door because I do have a custom paint job on the front of my door. Now there are lots of different types of moss that I could have used to get this project done but I wanted to be sure that I used what I already had on hand to keep this budget friendly so I just used the sphagnum moss that I used previously to use it on house plants and I'm shaking everything to make sure that I was able to secure the sphagnum moss to the foam well so that it's not like always falling off inside my house or on my porch. I'm also um, taking off all of the little strings that you get when you use the hot glue gun because that does shine in the natural light once I put it outside. Now that my dried hydrangea blooms have dried with the paint, it's ready to start figuring out where I want to put each bloom and securing the bloom to the foam. Now what I did was I cut them to size. I wanted them to be tight to the wreath and I got some hot glue on the edge and the tip of that hydrangea and then I used a faux pick to kind of create a little hole where um, I wouldn't be like bending or cracking the stem because they are delicate, um, the hydrangea blooms. So you have to make like a little pre-drill, a little hole in the foam and then go ahead and hot glue gun. Um, I use, I hot glue gun the stick actually, the little um, stick that's left over on the hydrangea instead of trying to glue the hole. But I also did it the other way where I just put the glue directly in the little hole that I made and I just pushed the hydrangea stem um, into the little hole that was there. So um, it takes a while guys. I know on this video it looks like it not, it's so fast you can't tell how much time I spent on this but this was probably the most time consuming thing about doing this wreath. And again, here I am shaking off any of the little petals that might fall off later and also removing some of the strands of the hot glue that we talked about before. Now the next step was I wanted to again bring some of that Crespedia um, into and incorporate that into the wreath and so I cut them to where they would stick out just a little bit and where I could place them at different angles. So I didn't do them all facing up or all facing down. I kind of did some on the edge sticking out. I put some facing inwards towards the green moss because I wanted a little bit of whimsy and variety to the wreath. And as you can see, it brings a little bright pop. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I covered all my angles. So I put it um, like vertical to see how it would look if it was hanging up on a door. And um, I realized that I had a few little holes that I needed to fill. So after I secured the final Crespedia to the reef, I moved on to trying to brainstorm a little bit and starting to think about how I might secure this little light up bead to the center of the moss pad on the reef. Now the switch for this bee is on the back, so I knew I have to figure out a way to place the bee on a hinge on the middle of the moss pad so that I can have access to the switch. So once I brainstormed that a little bit, I moved on to looking at my supply of floral faux picks um, that I keep in the garage. So this is the container that I have. I found the container at a thrift store and over the years I have filled that container up with different types of floral picks that are faux. 
that I could use at different times of the year to brighten the different areas of my garden, particularly in areas where I can't use real flowers, maybe areas that I don't get that much sun. So I tested out these icy blue picks and I loved, loved, loved the icy blue color against some of the more muted colors in the wreath, but I couldn't secure them so I settled on these beautiful little Easter themed um, picks and I put them all along the side to cover the side of the wreath and it also gives me a little bit of color. I secured these little polka dot picks um, all around the wreath and I secured them specifically with paddle wire to the metal frame that didn't have anything on it and that was still showing. And that's what it looks like so far and I think it's really cute. I had to fiddle with it a little bit to make sure that all of the sides were covered but I think it looks good. And again you see me here sort of fiddling with the little light of bee to make sure that I'm liking what it's looking like along the way. It's just a habit of mine. Again, I'm trying to save money, so I used this picture hanging kit that I had laying around the house to try to figure out if I could use some of these components to secure um, the bee to the center of the little moss pad on the reef. And because I didn't want to deal with nails or screws or anything like that, I just hot glue gunned it to the bee. Now, again, going with the theme of affordability, you can see that even though this is a cool little bee, it only cost me $5.99. And if you have a coupon or if it's on, I think these were actually on sale. So on top of the $5.99, there was a percentage off. So as you can see, I'm a fan of hot glue. I wanted to make sure it did not come off. I didn't want it falling. So then I went outside and I kind of tried to see where I wanted to place it. I put a bow there, so I kind of put it a little bit lower and I put a little bit of glue where I thought I might want to hang the bee and I used this little special doohickey that was also in the um, hanging kit and I tried to squeeze it a little bit tighter so that it would fit within the little doohickey that I put on the bee because it was kind of too wide and sticking out. So I glued it as you can see here there's a bunch of strings and I'm trying to remove it so it doesn't look glossy. Um, and I secured it as best as I could and I waited a little while to let it dry before I actually went back and put the bee on the hook. Alright guys, so this is the final step. I lit it up, I turned it around, and I went to see if the bee would actually go into the little hook and actually stay on it. And it worked. It did. It took me a little while to figure out the angling, but it worked and I was able to secure it to the wreath. So I hope that you were inspired by this video to get out there and get started on your spring decor and maybe refresh some of the areas in your garden or your outdoor space that you've been wanting to switch up a little bit. I personally was inspired by Laura from Garden Answer who posted a video of herself making a reef out of things that she already had in her garden, which is why I wore a Garden Answer shirt during this video. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful spring and I hope that you like my wreath and that you make it your own when you try it yourself. Bye!